well, the onions came in the mail. They're all set. The ground's all ready, but it's going to be 25 degrees the next couple nights. That's a little cold. So they're going to hang out in the basement for a couple days uh, till it warms up a bit. And I'm here in the shop today with this funny thing. Probably wondering what the heck this is. This is the, uh, the dragon. It's from Sweden, of course. I got this from a neighbor last year who was selling it, and I've only used it enough to know that it's got a lot of potential, but you can see the benefit. I mean, a lot of the farm work is, you know, you know, up and down and up and down and up and down moving along the row. And well, this allows you to float across the whole row, um, pull weeds, plant plants, uh, do, uh, you know, whatever, while driving along on the tracks. Who doesn't need a tracked vehicle on the farm? You control the tracks with the foot pedals, you can go one way or the other, and just lay here on this ergonomically adjustable Swedish table and... There you go. No more up and down hard labor. Yeah, right? So that's cool enough as it is, but that alone didn't justify buying the machine, and I've got much higher hopes for this thing. So normally when we transplant uh, plants into the rows out in the field, there's a tractor, and there's this thing pulled by the tractor that has a tank of water on it, and that and that device has this wheel on it that pokes holes in the ground and, and drops water out, out into the hole, and then you put your plant in it. And on a small farm, it's always felt like such an unnecessary thing to have a giant heavy tractor with a big engine and a driver sitting there driving real slow and then this machine and then a couple people in the back putting plants in the ground. It's just a lot of people and a lot of equipment. When all you're doing is pulling this wheel and putting some water in the ground, that takes no power and you don't need any kind of big machine. Never mind that person on the tractor, can't they be more useful than sitting there just driving the tractor? So my holy grail of tractor aspirations has been to be able to plant while driving on a machine that's of the appropriate size for the job. Pretty small. I mean, these tracks put less pressure on the ground than your footprint, so it can go on ground that's wetter than you want to drive a heavy tractor on it. So being able to get plants in the ground at the right time, regardless of whether it's just rained a lot or not, is just an incredible benefit on a vegetable farm. So I'm trying to make it so I can have a water tank on each side, and then make a frame to attach the transplanter wheel out in front. So it's taking a little attention to make sure nothing's gonna bend or break. But I think I've got the design down, and I'm ready to start putting it together. Conveniently, there are these holes in the frame here. Originally, I was just thinking I could bolt it straight on, but um, these axles are they wobble. So I can't fix my new parts here to something that needs to move around in the machine. So I've got to attach it loosely with pins to allow it to flex as it needs to. There we go. And then this is the square tube is going to be my main frame here. And I was originally I thought I'll just well, well, this all together and weld that all together. But it's not super trivial to get all of these things welded up exactly parallel. And I'm not even convinced that these holes in these axles are actually all perfectly square to each other. So while I could try to weld up the theoretical mathematically perfect fit, I'm not convinced that'll work out in the real world, and so I'm just gonna bolt this on. Gonna be sure to, gonna be sure to give it enough room for itself to move. Especially on a retrofit like this, the flexibility of bolting just can't be beat. I'm not sure what the tolerances ought to be here, so I'm just going to make it as precise as possible. Pretty good. Cross pieces for the deck. I'll weld this together and weld a frame around it, and then put the boards on it. Ta-da! So it obviously needs a deck, but here's the place to put a big tank. My structural fear, which I'll just wait and see about, is that when this tank with its 200 pounds of water rocks from side to side, it's putting pressure on these pins here, going through this aluminum bar, and I don't want those holes to be pushed and rounded out um, by all the force rocking that from side to side. And I wanted to make it long enough, uh, pretty long shelf here, so I can take some plants with me. Uh, and if it's too long, I'll cut it off later. 
but this is pretty much what I was hoping for. Obviously some uh, finishing touches to put on, but I think you got the idea. The coolest thing about this design though is, remember the whole idea was not just to get a shelf on the machine, although that's useful in its own right, it's to attach this transplanter wheel to a frame in front of the machine so I can transplant while laying down on it. And the neatest thing about this is that the main frame cross piece here is actually a receiver hitch to hold the frame for, the, for that wheel. I'm going to finish putting it together then show you what it looks like. So I'm finishing up welding here and I'd just like to say that there are actual snowflakes in the air. Not what I expected today. Not what I expected. April Fool's Day weather, I suppose. Well, I'm real psyched to have finished up both pieces today. There's a lot of holes to drill real precisely. And I'll be back in not too long to so finish the rest. Very cool. And very cold. It's almost like it's getting down to 25 or something tonight. I mean, look at this snow. Whew, cold last night. I ended up putting a heater in here with the potatoes to keep them from freezing. Fortunately, the sun coming in through the doors in the morning makes a sort of a greenhouse effect in here and it's not so bad inside the shop. And I'm looking forward to getting this dragon done. This will be a two day project, but I'll tell you, I was planning on a two week project of getting this dragon ready to go for the season start to finish. I've been waiting on parts for a couple months because in talking with the guy who sells these things, it seemed like I was going to need to replace all the axles on all these wheels on the tracks. But once I got it in here and started looking at it, it turned out all I needed to do was tighten the track tension. This giant nut controls the tension here and they're all metric and uh, you know, I didn't know where my uh, 55 millimeter wrench was. That's like uh, two and a quarter inches. Yeah, like I have a wrench that big. So I had to make a uh, wrench extension to get under there to turn with the big wrench. Not the most straightforward, but certainly a solvable problem. And now the tracks are nice and tight and the machine works the way it should. So I'm really excited to get this thing done and out of the shop in time to plant cabbage with it later this week. I've just got to figure out how to get this transplanter wheel attached in front of the machine and then I can take it out for a spin. Just gotta weld them up, then put them together and see how it goes. Hey, the moment of truth. If you can believe it, this took all day. What a great project. To figure the concept is pretty simple. I mean, shelves, some extensions out for the frame out front, sure, that's pretty straightforward. But the next step then, figure the design. Well, how are the force is gonna work? How's the thing gonna get put together? Where the stress is gonna be, gonna be? Make sure it's not gonna break. That's a little more involved. But never mind the plan on paper, you got to construct the shapes on the raw materials and figure the tolerances so it all fits together. It does take a certain amount of experience to operate the machinery to build the parts, but like most things, the behind the scenes work is the bigger part of the job. Well, thinking about this all winter and since before that, I can't wait to see this come together. Well, that is cool. The trickiest thing about designing anything is getting the range of adjustment right so it'll work in any sort of condition. So I've got a number of holes here. I can make this go up and down. I'll probably cut the bottom off uh, once I figure out how high it's supposed to be. I can take these pins out, move the wheel over to a different set of holes. All I know, it might be hard to appreciate what's going on here if you're not familiar with the usual transplanting system. But let me tell you, in doing research for this thing, I couldn't find anybody with a machine like this anywhere. I can't even. It's pretty 